Hey, what is up, YouTube? It's Adam back here, and today I have another video. This time it is making episode 5, and today I'm going to be making Clone Commander Doom as seen in his Season 6 Clone Wars armor. So this figure was originally recommended back in episode 2 of the making series. Uh, I got a little sidetracked, but um, this figure was originally recommended by Admiral Snackbar, um, and along with Coastal Plays. Um, so yeah, it was a really tight race between uh, Doom and Bly, but uh, Doom prevailed by one like, so uh, I might eventually get around to making Bly, but uh, we'll have to see on that one. But anyways, um, here is the base parts I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using the AP2 AV Figures helmet uh, and the Clone Army Customs visor, the Phase 1 Clone Trooper torso, the white hips and white legs, and I'm going to be using this Fives decal just for the visor and the breathers and all the basic parts that I need for the helmet. So yeah, uh, without further ado, let's get right into making this figure. Alright, so starting off, I uh, began with the arms. Uh, these were mainly outlines uh, just making the shoulder pads and then the uh, little line that comes across the midsection of the arm uh, that is basically the undersuit except it represents also the little outline of the elbow pad as well uh, on the clone armors and uh, admittedly this is a pretty tedious process but i think uh, it really pays off in the end because the outline i make for the shoulder pad uh, will make it immensely easier to sculpt that uh, shape later on just because it's really just laying down procreate where there isn't black paint And so as I said, the next step was uh, adding the actual shoulder pad itself uh, with the Procreate, which is a putty, and really it just is as simple as just covering all of the white inside of the uh, markings. The next step was then to paint the uh, sides of the torso. I use this using my one bristle brush, which is a technique I got from Anonymous Figs on Instagram. Um, he cut down his one of his brushes uh, a while ago, and that's how he paints really thin lines And I think it's a great way just to get super thin lines that are super straight and uh, You'll notice me also painting with my exacto knife um, that is mainly just because it's one of the sharpest uh, Blades that I had and it's just super thin and I didn't have a lot of good paint brushes on me at the moment uh, since I am not at home uh, so I really just relied on that throughout this figure as you'll see but um, Yeah, it's just a really good technique um, Just in general and you can see me adding the pockets here and the side paint as well And then I have a full wrap uh, that basically continued the printing all the way around the torso And the next step was then uh, sculpting the uh, knee pads which Definitely are one of the harder pieces to sculpt. Um, the Procreate is just difficult to work with uh, to make it look clean at first. So the sculpt uh, looks good once it's sanded down uh, like it is there uh, along with the shoulder pads. But uh, before that it was admittedly very messy, but it's a long process. And then next I painted the uh, little lines above the knee pads, which are meant to connect the top of the knee pads and the legs and to represent various armor markings that the clones have along with the black going around the sides um, which is just more uh, general markings that the, the clones have. Then I painted on the gray on Doom's arms. Uh, this was a mix of a granite gray I think and a uh, some white paint. Um, it works really well, I think, and I just ended up painting pretty much exactly around the outlines that I had already made on the arms. And then I moved on to the shoulder pads. So after I was done painting those, I painted uh, the knee pads and pretty much the entire area around the knee pads um, in the same gray, uh, making sure not to hit those dark gray outlines I had already made uh, for other parts of the armor. 
um, but it was also a very tedious process. Uh, I did have to go over it in two layers, um, but uh, I think it turned out really, really nice, and I really like this gray color that I used, and I think it works really well on the Doom Troopers. So here you see me finishing the bottom section of the arm as well. Uh, and this was also part of the process was painting inside the arms and I admittedly also uh, sanded down the sides of the torso just to make it a little bit easier for the arms to swing so they wouldn't scrape the paint off. So I then created the green that I was going to use with the real yellow apple barrel color and the admiral blue apple barrel color. Uh, mixed together these created this really nice green that I think worked really well for doom um, I have seen variations of doom that are ranged from basically all of green all the way to like a light green And I wasn't really sure and I just was looking at the pictures of the clone uh, Commander doom uh, from the Clone Wars and I just really wanted to do um, just basically like a forest ish green uh, something that was like not too dark, but also not too light. So I just sort of landed in the middle and you can see me painting the torso here. Um, I think it works really well and you'll see later on uh, it works really well with the gray as well. Uh, so I'm really happy with how it turned out uh, despite all the variations in the colors. So next I took a Mornfang Brown Citadel color um, and painted the belt area and I will admit that Citadel paint is a little difficult to work with uh, just because I tried watering it down it just really it takes a lot of layers to get that stuff to stick um, but then after I finished painting the belt I moved on to the top of the legs which uh, was also included painting the insides of the legs just because I really wanted to be thorough about the detail on the sky. Um, and since that paint won't rub off so yeah uh, and then I used some carved hips and attached the legs here and this was in order to then start painting uh, the hips as well the green color uh, that I had painted the top of the legs and I think this all turned out great um, I would have add, added more outlines uh, to the knee pads if I had the uh, if I wanted to but I think it worked just being sort of minimalist about it um, but then you can see me painting the uh, shoulder pads there as well. Um, and then I started working on the helmet as well, uh, which included cutting out the face decal and the breathers. And then I dipped these in the water to actually apply them. And I'm applying them to an AP2 AV figures helmet, as I said earlier, and uh, using a toothpick. I didn't have my sponges on me, so I'm, I'm glad that it, it was able to dry effectively on the helmet. Um, because normally I would press it down, but it works. And then you can see the shoulder pads right there. And from here, I started painting underneath um, the, or in the middle of the visor, I guess you wanna say, um, the gray color that I'd used on the legs. Um, and then I started working on the visor as well, uh, painting the, the green color, and then painting all the way around the helmet with that same green, um, basically painting everywhere where the gray was not and uh, pretty much it came out super smooth, I will admit. Um, I was shocked at how I, I watered it down to the perfect uh, consistency pretty much, um, and it worked out really, really well. And then you can see the figure uh, with the visor on right there, and then me adding the dark gray dot on his visor. And then I painted the yellow on his uh, visor and torso, and then I painted the uh, weathering, which is something that I don't normally do on my clones, but I figured I would take this dark gray and just start roughing up the gray areas or the light gray areas just because I really wanted to add some detail. Like, Doom is really battle damaged, um, not necessarily in like severe ways. He's, his armor is just beat up, and I felt that uh, with such light colors, I feel like this would really add just another layer. So I went ahead and just added a bunch of weathering all over the gray. Then I started cutting out the waist cape as well. This was an old design that I had made. Uh, so I'm basically just going to be painting around the uh, existing design with the new colors to make it match.
But then finally, I was just adding some other minor details, um, including uh, the little marking he has on his left breastplate as well. And then finally, I put the figure all together, and you can see I painted the hand armor as well, and I added the waist cape as well. So we have the whole figure uh, fully painted up, and I am really, really happy with how this turned out. It is one of the best clones I think I've made, and it just definitely, in terms of detail, is just like it blew my mind even to just. Um, I didn't realize how much detail I was giving it by weathering it, but it just looks really, really good, and it looks a lot like uh, Commander Doom himself, so uh, I'm just really happy with how this came out, and you guys can let me know your comments down below uh, what you think, um, and yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more, and this is goodbye, and have a nice day.